Yeah, Mike, um, in terms of when a team is struggling kind of for a long period, um, you know, do you try to vary your approach at all? We don't get to see a lot of the day to day. Is there anything you could try to do, you know, that you see differently to try to help them kind of through it as the, as the kind of struggle goes on? Well, all you can do when you play basketball, you got to work. You got to go to practice. You got to watch film. You got to continue to do the same things that uh, you've done when you've won. And, you know, the only way you work your way out of a slump is you got to put the time in on the floor and hope, hopefully it'll be a carryover when you go to the, the real game. I mean, that's that's just how basketball is. I mean, there's nothing else you can can really do. You got to practice. You got to work through it. Mike and Alex. Yeah, good morning, Coach. Um, get, given that now the, the Big Ten tournament is really the, the best chance to make the NCAA at this point, do you, do you view these last four games of the regular season as, you know, a chance to try out different things to, to potentially get on a run and build some momentum going into that tournament? Well, again, you're right about that. I mean, we we got to win all four games to even – have a shot, and then once we get in the tournament play, we got to win some games in the tournament play. If not, win the Big Ten to, to probably make the the tournament. Um, I'm not, not looking that far down the road. The only thing I'm looking at is Wisconsin. Uh, you know, we got to take little steps right now based on where we are, and Wisconsin is staring us in the face. They've had their struggles. So that's all I'm truly thinking about right now, one game at a time. Alex and Zach. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. You mentioned after the Penn State game that you were um, not ups only upset with the way you play, but just kind of how you've coached. Is there anything you look at specifically that could have you could have done differently when you kind of look at the season as a whole right now? Well, it's been nice to have Xavier Johnson uh, to help lead. Um, you know, when I coach, every year I've coached, you know, I've, when things don't go well, I point the finger at me. And, you know, a lot of coaches won't do that. But at the end of the day, when things go well, I point the fingers at the players. And, you know, that's just kind of been my nature, the nature of how I've coached over the years. Um, you know, I know how it was when I played and I played for coaches that have had success with me and I played for coaches that ha haven't had success. And, you know, sometimes coaches don't want to take the blame and they want to put it all on the players. I'm not that type of coach. I, I, even though I don't miss <laughs> jump shots, wide open shots and don't miss free throws, I'm still a big part of it. And, you know, I take a lot of responsibility. So all I can do right now is continue to work with my team and try to put them in the best position possible to be successful, and hopefully they'll come through for us. Zach and Jeff. Mike, um, thanks for the time. I guess talking about in particular just, uh, you know, how you approach kind of every day. You've been with some young teams in your time in the NBA that maybe had the will but didn't have the habits, you know, to kind of figure out how to navigate a losing streak or a slump or whatever. Do you reach back to maybe – any of your experiences, particularly in Atlanta with younger guys in terms of trying to help sort of guide them through these kinds of experiences? You know, again, guys, the only thing you can do is come, you, you know, you can't take off from practice. You can't stop watching film and, and studying your opponent. You I mean, you, you just can't do that. Or you really don't put yourself in a position to win. Um, and, that's all I know as a player, when you struggle, you got to go to the gym and you got to work and you got to continue to watch film and, and you got to think positive and have strong beliefs that you can come out of a slump when you, when you're in it. And that's, you know, that's the battle that I'm having right now with our team is that, you know, I'm trying to get them in a good place mentally. So when they step on the floor, they're, you know, they feel good about themselves. I mean, and hopefully that will click and, you know, you get a game under your belt. Now you start to feel good about yourself. I mean, we went through this a little bit a couple of years ago where I think we lost four or five in a row and, and it's tough, you know, but 
somebody's got to pick us up. You know, when you're out on the floor, you know, players have just got to step up and make plays and and feel good about themselves, and I got to help them do that. Jeff and Daniel. Good morning, Coach. Appreciate your time. Um, looking at some of the analytics, you guys are more efficient offensively with one, playing four out than with two bigs on the floor. Obviously, also, two bigs are very productive for you, two really good players. How do you, how do you manage that? How do you figure out and decide when to play both of them or when to you know play more four out? Well, when we won, we've won with both of our bigs on the floor. You know, that's what I look at. You look at analytics based on we haven't played a lot where we played four round one this year. So you look in the shorts, you look in the short uh, stats, basically. You know, we basically have played with two bigs on the floor most of the season. And the games that we have won and played well, they've, they've been in and out of the game. So – you know, I, I don't look at short minutes. I look at what we've done as a whole. And, you know, the fact, you know, it's it to me, from a basketball standpoint, it's hard to gauge our season based on the fact that we haven't had Xavier. You know, I mean, and I'm not putting it all on that, but Xavier was a big piece to the puzzle in terms of leadership and being able to run our team as a senior point guard. And, you know, we put so much pressure on Gabe Cups that, you know, that's not fair to him, uh, even though he's played well in spurts for us. Uh, it's just, for me, it's been tough in that regard because we haven't had Xavier. So we just got to continue to work. Daniel Jack. Yeah, Coach, looking at Wisconsin, um, obviously you guys lost by 12 in Madison last month. When you look at them, they've kind of had some rough stretches here in the last month or so as well. What's changed with them? And then when you kind of reflect back on that first meeting, what do you feel like you guys need to improve on? Well, we got to defend, man. I mean, when you look back at it, they scored 91 points. We scored 79 points. Um, I mean, you're not going to win like that. I mean, we shot great from the twos, great from the threes, made our free throws. Uh but they were better in those categories and you're not going to beat anybody in the big 10 like that. So defensively, you know, we got to come with it, you know, on, on Tuesday in order to beat them because they are a good offensive team. You know, they play inside out. Um, um, I don't, I know after the game he wasn't real happy with his defense. He said to me, um, and I'm, I surely wasn't happy the way we played defense. So, you know, we we got to find some kind of defensive presence, and that's kind of what we've been working on a little bit and, and, and see if that can keep us in the game until we can start making our threes and our free throws. Jack, and then we'll close with Zion. Yeah, Mike, um, last Monday you mentioned hoping that Xavier could return in a, a week or two. I guess in the last week has he been able to – practice at all do you have an idea of when he might be able to come back he did some things yesterday uh, on the floor um not a lot of contact um so all I'm doing is you know I'll go down the day and talk to Tim and just kind of see where he is uh, I know he wants to play man in the worst way and time is kind of running out on him and you know I feel for him in that regard but um I'm just going to kind of follow his lead. You know, I don't like playing players when they don't practice and, and you know, not have some kind of contact. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'll know more today and see where he is in terms of him wanting to play because I, I know they told me four to six, seven weeks at the time of the injury. And we're at, I think, about four four weeks now. So we'll see today and see how he felt after running around a little bit yesterday without the contact and, and go from there. That's all we can do. Zion, last one. Hey, Mike, you mentioned earlier just how, you know, when you're going through a stretch like this, you still have to prepare and practice the same way and, you know, watch up on the field with other teams. Have you sensed any slippage in that? And if so, how do you kind of reverse that? 
Oh, there's never any slippage. You know, we work, my man. You know, I mean, we come to work, uh, you know, and we put in a good two to two and a half hours every day. And um, that's the only way I know. Uh, my staff and I, we watch a lot of film together, and then we watch film with the team. That's how I was taught, uh, win or lose. That's how I was taught as a basketball player, and that's not going to ever change. I think most coaches do the same identical thing. That's how you learn, and that's how you get better. You got to work on the basketball floor, and you got to watch film to get better. All right. Thanks, Coach.